I noticed a lot of challenges within the fraternity of aging population that even the National Hospital Insurance Fund could not address those. And therefore, I started thinking on how do we address those challenges because we are all equal Kenyans. We have equal rights. And uh, I started now thinking on forming an organization that can become a platform for me to push the government. Many things happen in Kenya and older people are not aware. Once you contribute to your NSSF uh, contributions, it goes to the arms of the government. They do business with the money and they never give you the interest. And if ever they give you very little. Why? Because it's an act of parliament. You have no right. Why would the elderly stay for 10 years out there then to get the, the, the cash transfer at age 70 when most of them, like the ones we just met, they are complaining that it's not helping them. Most of them at age 70, they are already dead. Uh, I like the way you put it because yeah. uh, Kenya is a signatory of the UN. Yes. It's a part of the UN community. Yes. And uh, according to the United Nations, an older person is 60 years and above. Yes. But when it comes to now benefiting as an older person, they localize and say Kenya is not able to handle the older people. And I want to tell you that the population of older people in Kenya is only 2.7. Million. Yeah. Uh, then we should ask ourselves, is that a so big a figure that the Lucy Moria Network, this is Lucy Moria. And we thank you so much for the continued support, subscribing and watching, liking and wanting. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. Thank you very much. Today we have visited our elderly in the count of Kajiando in Gong town. And we have our guest today from Karika organization. And our visitor today is Elijah Moeda. Elijah Moeda. Yes. How are you? I'm very fine. How are you? Very sana. Welcome. Karibu sana. Asante. Yes, nana na karibisha mwingine. Ah, uh, sasa ni mimi ni kokoe. Ndio. So we are happy to be here today mm -hmm. as we visit the elder Lingo mm -hmm. and uh, we have seen you have uh, an organization which has been working all over the country. Yes. And uh what is the organization? You need to tell us what it is, what you do, and uh, tell us about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. I'm also very happy and uh, feel great yes. that you have decided to come and see us. Yes. Uh, my name is Elijah, as you have said. Yes. And I'm the star, uh, founder and the CEO, Karika. Karika is here, is called Kenyan Aged People Require Information, Knowledge and Advancement. Wow. This is a name I came up with when I did my research here in Kenya, Nairobi. I found that the majority of the people do not have adequate information so that they can push for their rights. As a result, I found the organization to help the older people come up with their voices so that the government and even the community can understand their challenges. Karika is located in Dagoreti South, Lirota location. We are just behind Lirota Police Station. But also we work outside the uh, sub-counties. We go even to other counties because our aim is to have a national voice for older people and therefore we go on mobilizing groups of older people to train them on how to claim their rights. Why we claim our rights is because even look at all the activities, development agendas in Kenya, we talk much and highlight about the youths and the young people, children and the women. We forget that we are also aging. And this is a population that matters to me very much. Therefore, today I'm here in Gong because I had come to support the group here in Gong, which is a, a group of older people coming up very well. They are planning for the Elder Abuse Awareness Day, which comes on 15th of June. And I'm very, very happy that they can manage to 
organize an event on that day. Therefore, I've come here with my team to support that group so that we can do activity that day here in Gong, where we are planning to do it around here in the town of Gong. Yes. Oh, thank you very much, Elijah. That's so elaborate. And when was that that you started thinking about the elderly and starting the long word Karika, which is that's a lot of words there? Actually, I should say this is something that pushed me from when I was very young, as young as 35 years. I started seeing, hearing from the radio that Maripo ya pesa ya That was very common during our youth. And that every Sunday you could hear radio repeatedly saying kuna maripo ya, ya uh, pesa ya maripo ya uzeeni. <laughs> like I wanted to understand who are these people who are getting the money and my mother was not getting. So I got interested. I wanted to have my mother accessing this money. But uh, unfortunately when I went to the NSSF building uh, office, they told me this cannot uh, cater for everybody. It's uh, for those who are employed and they are being deducted automatically. I was told that it is an act of parliament of 1966. I don't remember whether 66 or 68. And it left behind my mother, though she was old, and also an equal Kenyan. I felt like, oh, if there is money that is called national and it cannot serve every Kenyan, then that is, there is a gap already. I started thinking on how can we equalize everybody as a Kenyan. Because this is a national social security fund. So the national social security fund that motivated you to start this because your mom could not get it. I'm sure your mother was not a civil servant. So how did you find out anything that can help others who are not civil servants? Uh, I found that uh, this uh, is just an act of parliament which left a lot of older people outside and I felt now there is need to push for that right to equalize the people and this was uh, way back 1990, I think uh, 1993, 95, around there. I felt like by then I was working as a civil servant, working with the Minister of Transport and Communications, and I did not enjoy working with the government because even I witnessed some of my senior officers who retired ahead of before me, they could not access their savings or retirement benefits because of charges within the office. I started seeing the weakness within the office and I also asked myself, even if I wait until I retire, would I get this money or I experience the same problem? So I thought this is an area I need to push before I grow old. I started now thinking, why don't I resign and uh, go and start thinking on mobilizing. I did my resignation letter. Wow. And so you resigned at what age? I think then I was 38, 39 years. So you did not wait for the 50, 60 years to retire? No, and I could never wait for it because I did not see any happiness at the age of retirement. Wow. I also noticed the majority of those people who retired at that time, they could even die before three, four years because of those upcoming challenges that they were not used to. I thought it's good even to come to the community, socialize with the people, so that even if I reach that age, I still be strong. And I am happy that now I've already attained the age, and I'm still active. Uh, retiring from the employment uh, age does not mean you retire. You continue working until death. You do and something also, else. as Christians, we are told if you don't work, you don't have to eat. Me, I want to eat. So, Mr. Karika, yes. out of your love for helping the aging after seeing the gap, what are, the, what, what are some of your agendas, the activities that you started doing that you think they embraced with that gap? One, uh, I want to thank God for that. When I resigned the work and I went back to school, I did my community studies, I noticed a lot of challenges within the fraternity of aging population, that even the National so uh, Hospital Insurance Fund could not address those. And therefore, I started thinking on how do we address those challenges 
because we are all equal Kenyans. We have equal rights. And uh, I started now thinking on forming an organization that can become a platform for me to push the government. Thank God I came with the word Karika. And the Karika we registered in the year 2003. Since then, though I started, I registered it as a self-help group, and I was able to mobilize uh, quite a number of older women and men. I had only one man, man by then. Uh, we had to grow it slowly by slowly, which also was a very great challenge because many community would not understand why I, and what I'm doing with the older women. Uh, <laughs> but I persisted. Uh, uh, I want to say, through this Karika, and also the experience I got from the offices, I was able to interact with a lot of government officers in the different offices, and I came to realize many things happen in Kenya and older people are not aware. Once you contribute to your NSSF uh, contributions, it goes to the arms of the government, they do business with the money, and they never give you the interest. And if ever they give you very little, why? Because it's an act of parliament. You have no right. But if I give you my five shillings today, you stay with it for one year. Would you not pay with interest? Even the bank Even here. the shares we are buying within the companies, like Kenya Airways or the, or the others, we buy the shares and we get uh, interest every year. For these NSSF contributions, what do we get? We wait until we almost die. So, uh, Elijah, say, that's why I'm asking. Yes. Now you saw that gap, and uh, all those things were not happening. So, what did you do? What activities did you come up with to bridge that? Thank to you. make sure that they get something? First, I was to prepare a platform for the government to understand me. That is how I, I started mobilizing First groups was of older platform. people. Yes. That was agenda number one. I registered one. the organization. Mm -hmm. I mobilized the older people themselves. Yes. I gave them the information to understand so right. that they become my uh, uh, shield. Yes. And then we started now going from one office to the other. Yeah. I remember in those years, we used to go and even do processions within the city and going to particular officers of the government. One I remember was Mr. Mueraria, the late Mueraria. Yes. He was then the finance minister. Yeah. We have ever been to the attorney generals. We have been ever going to even the deputy president, former deputy president, Muheshimua Mudiawari. Yes. We met with those guys. We told them, this is the way to go. Our older people are suffering in the society. You look at the older people, majority of them, they are taking care of grandchildren, either because of HIV, AIDS, or road accidents, or any other kind. So older people, they have a lot of burdens, and the majority of them never got employment, either within the government or private firms. So do you think out of that pushing, there's anything changed? Oh yes, I am very grateful. I can assure you, the government took the idea, though they take it gradually and very slowly, but uh, one, we came up with a cash transfer for the older people. I've seen uh, they even partake, uh, partake, I have been a member of the committees that have been doing the policy about the aging. We did the first policy within the ministry in the uh, 1990, 19, 2019, uh, no, no, 2009. Yeah. We had the first uh, policy on the aging. But come 2010, uh, then we were told to go back and align it with the new constitution. This policy, yes, it has taken a lot of time until 2018 when it was now uh, passed. And now today, I'm very proud that the country has at least a policy on aging. I've seen also development. It might have the gaps, but it is there. But at least it's there. It was <laughs> not there. So we have also gotten there. Uh, guidelines and standards of uh, institutions of older people. It, it was not there. By they then. are not policies, but at least they are guidelines. They are guidelines, yeah. So, out of this, out of this, or because you are talking about the policy, even me, the policy that I know now, it still has the gap. It has gaps. Like the retiring age. The retiring age is 65. The definition of an older person, it is... 60, I say 60 years, and the retiring age in Kenya is 60, 60 years. Yes. But then, 
the, the policies that you have to push. Don't you see the gap? Why would the elderly stay for 10 years out there then to get the, the, the cash transfer at the age 70 when most of them, like the ones we just met, they are complaining that it's not helping them. Most of them at the age 70, they are already dead. Uh, I like the way you put it because yeah. uh, Kenya is a signatory of the UN. Yes. It's a part of the UN community. Yes. And uh, according to the United Nations, an older person is 60 years and above. Yes. But when it comes to now benefiting as an older person, they localize and say Kenya is not able to handle the older people. And I want to tell you that the population of older people in Kenya is only 2.7. Million. Yeah. Uh, then we should ask ourselves, is that a so big a figure that they cannot manage? I wonder why the government goes back, and I even got confused, because in the first we had agreed that we start cash transfer with the people from age 65 and above. This, the, it had at least a good will of the population of older people. But when the president Kenyatta came on board, he changed to, to 70 years. Now, since that time he said 70 years, there has not been any targeting on, of a single older person, which is very wrong. Number two, the ones that used to get there before, at 65, some of them have come up to 70 years. Others have died, and there is no replacement within the uh, caste transfer. So I find that there are so many gaps, and we need to address them. Two, the reason why I keep on mobilizing older people for is, is because I wonder why we are addressing equality, and of course guided by the Vision 2030, whose clarion is leaving no one behind. You will find that in Kenya, we have left older people for a long time. One, because we have the Act, uh, act protecting the women, we have the Children Act, we have the Women Act, we have the People with a Disability Act, but we don't have any Act of Parliament protecting the rights of older people. As a result, I feel this is a gap we need to address, and it is the high time we need the older people to come out and speak because it seems like the more we are going to Serikali Avijana, the more we are leaving the older people <laughs> behind. Yeah. And this has been very common in Kenya. Even in the parliament, you hear them saying, he is Serikali Avijana. So here is the Serikali, yes. here is the parliament, here is the senate, here is the older people. Yes. Who do you think is not doing their part? Otherwise, if they did, we all did, we would be somewhere by now. I should say, we are lacking political goodwill. Why do I say this? I've seen the ministry officers doing the policies, taking them to parliament, and they are taken back. I've seen, even last year, but one, we had a, a geriatric bill, we had the aging bill, which was also cancelled, taken back to the ministry. So the... Uh, Staff at the ministry level are working, but when it goes to the parliament, the parliamentarians are pushing it back. It takes a long, a long time to draft and come with a, uh, a document that the parliament would pass. So the, pa the parliamentarian, the person who is put there by the same elderly people, mm -hmm. is the one who will not stand for them. So then, then like you were saying, I think the older people need to come out themselves and because knowing that who their enemy is now. Thank you is very much. Doing, yes. We wake up very early in the morning to go at the due elections. We fought for those guys. When they go to the parliament, they forget about us. This is the high time the government should understand that the older people require equal uh, part of the country's benefits. Why do we have, and even I ask you, I've seen the government introducing the Women Trust Fund. And it is, and it it is, is only serves the young women. When it comes to our grandmothers, grandfathers, they're not accessing it. What is this that it's not clear when one is a woman should always access this money? A 65-year-old woman, I would see, wish to see any single group of older people who have accessed the Women Finance Trust.
Wow. Or forward, yeah. Wow. So, what is way forward? What would you tell our elderly out there about their right? What would you tell our parliamentarians that are re-elected, they are put in those offices by the same elderly people? It seems like the way you say it, the parliamentarians, the, Senate, the people in the Senate, they have let our older persons down. What would you tell them? I would tell the older people that the Kenya government only understands people when they come out like the way women did and also like the way people with disability did. They came out in unison and they talked about their rights, then they were given the rights. Now is the reason why I have to mobilize all the women, wherever they are, let them come out and speak because <laughs> the only language that our parliamentarians listen you and are, understand. Are you going to mobilize all the women or all the people? Um, uh, Actually, you say they are not, actually, they are not called older people. Yeah. They are called aging population in our country. You have just Be said older women. So yeah. I'm like, oh, maybe women are the ones who are old. When we call older, mm. that sometimes we are seen like we are segregating. Yeah. And I hate segregating. I would say 60 years and above. They are the people I'm referring as an aging According population. to the definition. Yeah. And also focusing and emphasizing on another person. person yeah. Yes. So, all the people, men and women, let's come out over 60. Let us, because we know our rights now, if we don't know, we know the people who are supposed to be speaking for us. And Mr. Karika tells us there is a group of people who we elected and put in those offices. These are the members of parliament and the senate, but they are not discussing the bills that deal with the issues of our elderly. Mr. Karika, the other day, mm -hmm. we had a conference, an international conference, and I'm sure you were there, and the president spoke. What did he say? Did anything change? Well, uh, I was there, and he said that it is, uh, it is even bad for a country like Kenya for getting its older population. And he said he's ready to start paying the cash transfer as early as before the salaries of civil servants. This was good, but also I want to remember 2017, when President Kenyatta went to Moranga and launched the 70 plus, he so said, but it never happened. So yes. We have seen even older people going for seven months without getting the cash transfer. We have seen the same program not registering older people and even the ones who die they are not replaced as a result the money goes back to the government so they don't have the uh, political goodwill to make the older people accountability account is not there it is not there yeah so as i speak it I want to say yeah. the president did so, speak yeah but uh, i'm still waiting to see you are still skeptical. Yes. If it happened in 2017, it could still happen again. Yes. So our older people, things are said. We still continue sitting on things that have been said. Let us come out. Let us fight for our rights because our rights are provided by the Constitution. And June, it is the day for older persons. I mean, um, older persons. Elder Abuse Awareness Day. Elder Abuse Awareness Day is coming very soon. And now we are creating awareness. I will not stop talking. I know information is power. And that's why Lucy Morrow Network is talking about your rights, your right to inclusion, your right to access to health care, your right to know, your right to information. So you have the information now. That's what we are saying. Let us come out and fight for our rights. Thank you. Yes. Karika, your last word? Yes. Uh, I want to talk to the government. Yes. Tell them that a government that forgets its older population yes. has no blessings. It is the older people who have the blessings of a nation. Therefore, it is the high time you start addressing the issues of older people equally as we address the issues of young people. Number two, it is not good to segregate people as per cohort of the age. It is a Kenya which is a family country and we should belong to one family which in, is inclusive. For the older people population, I would tell them it's the high time to come out 
and start speaking because we cannot afford to wait anymore. Thank you. And like I have said always, aging is a process. Everyone is aging every day. This issue of aging is not about the ones who are already aged. It's about everyone. So everyone should take part in fighting for the rights of the elderly. It might not be you now, but tomorrow it will be you. It may be someone you know. It might be your parent. It might be your neighbor. And it will affect you in one way or the other. Let us stand for the rights of the elderly and build them. Thank you. If you have not subscribed yet, don't forget. Thank you so much, Mr. Karika. Thank you very God much. God bless you for the good work yeah. you are doing. Thank you too. Yes, I'm thank very you. happy and continue the good work. Thank you. Thank you.